Hi, welcome back to Ask the Professor with Terry Cooper. I'm Dave Dufour, and we are going to be talking about the $1,000 mistake. What is that, Terry? Let's talk about it. Well, Dave, do you know what it costs to replace an air conditioner on an RV? Thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. That's why I, I figured. By the time you buy the the refrigerator or the unit, I should say, I call it a refrigerator unit because we talk in terms of heating and air conditioning. But by the time you buy that air conditioner and have it installed, you have just dropped a grand. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many times I've had people come into the shops where I've worked, and bless their hearts, you know, they they really probably didn't have the thousand dollars to spend, but because someone had not coached them, had shown them what was causing this problem, they said, this is the third one since we've owned this RV that we have had to replace. Oh my. What is going on with these? Mm -hmm. And honestly, what it all boils down to is a simple little device that they had picked up in the store and were using it like it was a standard device that they could use anywhere without realizing it had some limitations. And it is nothing more than our 30 to 15 amp reducer. Now what this thing is geared up for is to where you can plug your rig into it, into this cord right here, this plug, and what's going to do for us, it's going to set it up to where then you can then plug it into a wall receptacle, a 110 volt wall receptacle. Well the only problem is, is this little device right here is going to be operating, let's say you have a uh, class C or a travel trailer and you happen to have a 30 amp plug and I think I've got one here with me. Yes, right here it is. Okay, so let's say you have this 30 amp plug that you're working with right here and this is what's on your rig and if you look at it, you know, it's got three prongs. 30 amps, that's what it's going to take to run the air conditioner and you'll be able to have a little bit of extra power left over to run some of the other appliances. Well, unfortunately, when we take that 30 amp plug and we tie it into this reducer, we just now have reduced in half the amount of power that we will allow to pass and come into this coach. Okay. And so, unfortunately, we're still requesting more power. And if we, as you well know, any time that you take any sort of cable, conductor, or anything, and you start requiring it to give you more than what it's made for, it, the first thing it's going to do, it's going to get hot on you. Okay. And so that's what happens. Now, let me show you this plug here again. I want you to notice these prongs. See how they're melted? Okay. Well, what happens, Dave, is, is that when we plug this thing into this reducer plug that we've got here and we start utilizing it, that air conditioner starts pulling power. And the thing about an air conditioner is when it first starts off, it takes about three, maybe four times the amount of power to get that air conditioner started. And like I tell a lot of folks, it's kind of like trying to push start a car. If you have two or three people, you can usually get it rolling. And then once you get the automobile rolling, then one person can do the push, but it's that initial surge to get it going. Well, that's what happens with an air conditioner. When it first starts running, first turn it on, the thermostat says, hey, we need some cold air in here. Then what happens is that compressor starts trying to operate, and it may take three or four times the normal amount of power for it to do its job. Well, once we get it up and running, the power requirements drops off dramatically. But just imagine over a period of, say, a day, that air conditioner comes on, goes off, comes back on, goes back off. And so if we're trying to draw power through this 30 amp plug that's plugged into a wall receptacle or an extension cord, pretty soon we're not pulling enough power when we need to surge and get started and the wiring begins to get hot. And what we know about insulation, when it starts getting hot, it starts getting very soft and rubbery and then pretty soon it'll start melting. And that's what you start to see on these plugs. And you can see on this screen right here, this one slide that we have, you can see what the plugs begin to look like. Now, if you look at the slide we have here in the bottom, you can see the two black wires. The black wire, that's your hot wire. The white is your neutral, which is your return. Of course, your ground is your safety. Notice the size of difference of wires between, the, say, the extension cord and the 30 amp plug that we have there. I mean, basically, you can see that we're, we have about half the copper to work with. And so when you start trying to pull more power through a small wire, it's going to start heating up on you and start melting the insulation. And that's what happens. It's like the difference between a, a large pipe and a, and a small water pipe, basically. Same, that's perfect. Basically that's, a, that's a perfect analogy right there. Mm -hmm. It really is. Uh, I mean, if you're going to go out and water the garden, you don't have a large enough garden hose or a large enough pipe, you're not going to be able to get the job done as quickly as you need to. 
and that's what happens. And so I cannot tell you how many times I've had people come in and they have a compressor burnt up on their air conditioner and you start pulling out the power cord so you can plug it in and check it. And this 30 amp reducer is just basically welded to that plug because it's gotten so hot. Uh, I think of a situation I had one time where a gentleman came in and put a new air conditioner on there for him and he brought it back about two weeks later. It's all been out of shape because he said, I want you to honor the warranty on this air conditioner because this thing is supposed to last a whole lot longer than two weeks. And when I pulled the cord back out, we had already had a conversation with him and it encouraged him, please don't use this reducer plug to run your air conditioner on. It was back on there again. And like I told him, I said, I'll be more than happy to turn this in for warranty, but I will tell you, they're going to ask me to send pictures. And I, the one picture they're going to ask for is, was there anything on that power cord? Right. And when I show them this, this 30 to 15 amp reducer, they're going to deny the warranty claim because they're going to say, this is what causes the problems. This is what causes the insulation on the windings of that electric motor inside that compressor to give it up. And so, you know, it's a hard sell to ask a man to give you another thousand dollars to put a new air conditioner on, but that's what had happened in this particular situation. So with that being said, a thousand dollars. Well, now, if you're, if you're using this now, RVers want to use, be able to plug this in uh, to 110 so that they can maybe use the RV at home or, you know, at, at you know, in, or, or, or at, a, at, a, at, a, at a home type site. Is that, is that really the, the primary... Uh, uh, reason that they would use this? That's what we see. Uh, and even in some of the campgrounds, because maybe there's uh, some limits on some, some pedestal power. So somebody run an extension cord over and plug things in. And you know what? It's okay to use the reducer plug, but you just have to limit what you operate. Okay. I mean, it's okay to run the lights and you're going to run the converter and things like that. But just realize that an air conditioner and a microwave and the heating element in a water heater are going to pull excessive amount of power that pretty soon this reducer plug is going to going to start causing us problems and going to start costing you some serious money. Well, it seems like it would also cause some damage or it might be uh, have some danger to uh, on on the uh, uh, on the house end of things or on the pedestal end of things, not just for the RV, but kind of going <laughs> going the opposite direction too. Is that am I wrong on that? It is, and and you just hope and pray that the circuit breaker that you're tied into will trip. Well, that's and true. Protect. Yeah. But I can see, I mean, not only is this plug going to get hot, but that, that, that extension cord could get hot. And uh, you, don't, uh, you certainly don't want that, depend, depending on what it's in contact with, certainly. So here, uh, we, we, you got another slide here, too, uh, Terry, that this, sh this shows some of the other damage that I guess has, uh, has uh, been caused by this device. Now, now, what we have here, this was actually a transfer switch. In other words, this particular RV had it set up to where they could either run off a pedestal or they could run off of the generator. And depending on what, what mode you wanted to operate in, this, this box right here would switch it over. Well, when you start pulling excessive amount of uh, current through smaller wiring, like we're going to be doing with through a 15 to 30 amp reducer, we start heating the wiring up. And that's what happened here. And so if I remember correctly, this transfer gear and the labor that it took to replace it was almost $1,000 in of itself after we replaced the air conditioner. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, you know, he took a double whip on this thing. I mean, a double whammy because not only we have to go in there and do the repair so we can get power into his coach, but then we had to replace and repair the damage that had been done by the burnt wiring. So when I say it saves a thousand dollars, you know, that's no exaggeration because I used to see people come in and we'd know we were going to make payroll when they started talking about, well, I've had this electrical <laughs> issue. You know, oh my goodness. It's like, yeah. oh dear. You know, you know what it, this means, Mr. Jones? This means that I'm going on vacation this year. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I know sometimes that sounds cruel. That but. sounds cruel, but uh, right. Um, well, I guess, so the rule on these reducer plugs is don't use them very much. If you do use them, know what you're, know what you're using them for and don't overload them are limitations but right. like everything it has a purpose but you also as long as you know what its true purpose is mm -hmm. you're okay right. you really are but using them to run air conditioners microwaves and things like that uh, is not the ideal thing because like I say I've had people say well, but but I can get it it'll run and like I share them yes you probably will get the air conditioner to start but through a period of a day or over a period of a week pretty soon the insulation will begin to start breaking down on the plugs and the extension cords and all these things that you're plugged into 
and insulation starts melting away and then we really start having problems because we have our connectors and also with the conduct the conductors are going to be shorting out against each other and we really have what we call the Arkham Sparkum. Right. And then we have what we call we're going to let the magic smoke out of that compressor. So when we right. let the magic smoke out, magic you'll smoke. never be able to put it back in. That's so bad. that's bad. The magic smoke. Yeah, don't lose your magic smoke. Uh, okay, we are going to uh, close out this segment and our next segment coming up, we're going to be answering questions that come from you to the Texas RV professor. So stay with us. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad. <laughs> 